Okay, let's do one with the rational power. Okay, so for this one, uh, the first thing we'll do is take the first derivative. And before we do that, let's first multiply this out because otherwise we have to use the product rule, so it'll be easier just to multiply it out and use the power rule. So when I multiply this with powers, I'm going to get x to the two-thirds plus this will be six-thirds, so we're going to get eight-thirds, and then four x to the two-thirds. Okay, so we haven't done any derivatives yet. All we did was we distributed to get it in this form. So now we're ready to do the power rule. Take the derivative, 8 thirds comes down, x, subtract 1 from the exponent, subtract 3 thirds, you're going to get 5 thirds. For this one, 2 thirds multiplies by the 4, you're going to get 8 thirds. x, subtract 1 from this, and you're going to get negative 1 third. And then what I want to do is write this with uh, positive exponents. So when we do that, we get 8 over 3x to the 1 third. So, we want to find our critical numbers. Okay, so critical numbers, first way to find one is any place that the derivative is going to be undefined, you're going to get a critical number. So, we notice here that if we divide by zero, it's undefined, so therefore, zero is going to be my first critical number. The second way we find that is by putting in a zero and we're going to uh, solve for zero, saying the first derivative equal to zero here. And probably the best way to, to solve this is, is bring one thing over the other side and then cross multiply. So I'll have 8 over 3x to the 1 third is going to equal 8 over 3x to the 5 thirds. Okay, so just bring one of the terms over. And then we're just going to cross multiply. So actually I'll write this with the 5 thirds on top instead to make that easier to see. And when we multiply this across, we're going to get 24x. Now, 1 third plus 5 thirds, you're multiplying the exponents, you're adding them. You'll get a square there, and that's going to equal 24 when you multiply the other ones. Divide both sides by 24, x squared equals 1, and then we're going to get, when we solve it, plus or minus 1. So plus or minus 1, that's going to be my other critical numbers. So now I have three total critical numbers and now what we'll do is we'll put this into a table. Okay, so I'll erase this to get some space here. We're going to put the 0, negative 1, and 1 on our table and then we're going to pick some test numbers. Less than negative 2 or the negative 1, we'll try negative 2 and then negative 0.5, positive 0.5, and then 2 over here. When you put this in, you're going to put it into the first derivative, and I'm just going to give you the final sign configuration of what you're going to get here. You get negative plus, negative plus as a result. So this is your final sign configuration. What this is going to tell us is we're going to be able to get the intervals of increasing and decreasing. So let's start with that. We'll do the start with the negatives. We'll do the decreasing. Decreasing is where we have the negatives. So negative infinity to negative 1, and then also between 0 and 1. So that's the regions where we have a negative. That would be your decreasing intervals. Let's also do increasing. Increasing is where I have a plus, negative 1 to 0, and then from 1 to infinity. So those are your intervals for increasing. Next, we want to look for the local extrema. Okay, so we'll do the local, we'll do min first because we have a negative plus. First derivative test tells us that if you have a negative plus, you have a local min. Okay, so local min is going to occur at negative 1. We'll get the y value in a second. The other place that occurs is going to be at positive 1 because we have another negative going to positive. These numbers you want to put back into the original equation. And when we put these back into the original ones, we're going to get negative 3 for both of them. So again, we put negative 1 in here, and we put 1 uh, into each of these. If we put 1 in there, 1 in the 8 thirds is positive 1 minus 4. That's where it comes from. Negative 1 gives you the same answer. Okay, so these are the two local mins. We also have a local max. And that's going to occur where you have a plus going to a minus, so you have a zero there. 
zero for the x. We put zero back in the original one. Uh, then you're going to get zero as a result. Okay, so we get zero, zero. So these are all points eventually that we're going to be plotting along with the intercepts when we find those later. We're done with everything for the first derivative. We're ready now to find the second derivative. We'll continue off of this one here. For the second derivative, we're going to apply the power rule again. Now, you're going to bring the 5 thirds down in front. You're actually multiplying 8 thirds times 5 thirds. When you do, you'll get 40 ninths x to the 2 thirds, subtract 1 from the exponent. This, you have negative, negative will give you a plus, and then you're going to have 8 thirds times 1 third, it's going to give you 8 ninths, and that's going to be x to the negative 4 thirds, because again you're subtracting 1 from the exponent here. We're going to rewrite it. Second derivative is 40 ninths, x to the 2 thirds, plus 8 over 9x to the 4 thirds down below here. So 4 thirds is down below. Now, you're going to get a 0 here is one of the places that you're going to put on your number line. So let's go ahead and start with that. We have a number line here. At least we know that we have a 0 on there because that makes the second derivative undefined. Do we know it's an inflection point? No, we don't because we have to eventually do test points here and we have to see if there's any other numbers that go on here as well. So we've got this one. We found where the derivative is undefined. Next thing what we'll do is we're going to set this one equal to zero. So zero equals 40 ninths x to the two thirds and then I have plus eight over nine x to the four thirds. Best thing to do, the way to solve this is again doing cross multiplying. So we're going to bring one of the terms over, it doesn't matter which one, I'll have negative 40 ninths x to the 2 thirds will equal 8 over 9 x to the 4 thirds. So let me go ahead and write them up on top here again to make it easier. We'll put the 4 thirds, actually this one belongs in the bottom. Alright, so now we're going to cross multiply. Multiply this, we get negative 360 x to the 2 thirds, x to the 4 thirds. When you add that uh, together, you get 6 thirds, which is 2. So you get x squared is going to equal 72. If you divide both sides by negative 360, we get negative 1 fifth. Now, we can't solve that. The square root of this is going to be an imaginary number. So the only one that we're going to have on our table is going to be a 0. But before we jump to conclusions and say that's our only inflection point, let's first do test points and we're going to put them into the uh, second derivative. Remember the second derivative was this one right here. We're going to put in negative 1 and positive 1 into here. Now if you put that into those and work it out, you're going to get a plus for both of these. Now if I get a plus for both of them, what does that say? It means that it's concave up all the time except for at zero. Okay, so we're going to have concave up is going to be from negative infinity to zero, zero to infinity. Concave down is none. There's no places where it's concave down. Also, no inflection points. There's no inflection points because we have to have a change in sign here and we don't. We have a plus and a plus. You can only have an inflection point where the concavity changes. So we, uh, the next thing that we're going to do once we have all this, last thing we want to get a couple intercepts and then we'll be able to finally do our graph. Okay, so intercepts we'll do here. In the original form we can just set that equal to zero to get our x-intercepts. So x-intercept is going to be at uh, 0, 0, and then if you set this second part equal to 0, you're going to get plus or minus 2. So we get plus or minus 2 comma 0, those are your x-intercepts. Your y-intercept is going to be 0, 0 as well. So now that we have all these points uh, filled out, we're finally ready for the graph. Okay, time for the graph. 
we first start by the intercepts that we just found already that we indicated down here. Goes through 0, 0, 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. We have those three points there. We also have these local mins, negative 1 and negative 3, and 1, negative 3. We already have the local max, 0, 0, we have that already. So these are all the points that have been provided. So now we're going to use our increasing, decreasing, and concavity in order to fill in the graph. We have a decreasing part from negative infinity down to negative 1. So it's falling. We also know that it's always concave up, so it's curving up. So we're going to draw this. This would be curving up and it would be decreasing. Then it's increasing between negative 1 and 0. But it's still going to be concave up, so it's going to look like that. So it kind of falls down like this and goes to there. We have another one where it's going to be decreasing again and concave up. So it's going to come down to here, decreasing between 0 and 1, still concave up through the whole thing. And then it's going to be increasing again from 1 to infinity, but it's still going to be looking like it's concave up. So your graph's going to look like this. It looks like a a W with some rounded uh, bottoms down there. This point right here, first derivative, that's, it comes, that's a cusp right there. So that's why the first derivative is undefined at that point. Uh, whenever we have a cusp, our first derivative is always undefined. So we've now completed everything that they're asking for.